Hello, everyone, and welcome back to the RHAP coverage of Jetlag the Game, Season 11, Tag 3. Lots of numbers, but I'm your host, Taryn Armstrong, and I am here today with some very special guests. It's Adam, Ben, and Sam from Jetlag the Game, Tag 3. And uh, we're going to be talking about Tag 3 in this uh, this interview, Deep Dive Podcast, whatever you want to call it. Adam, how are you doing? I'm doing well. I'm doing well. I, uh, you know, as close viewers of Jet Like the Games uh, posting will know, we recently returned from Japan and I am uh, mostly now adjusted back to uh, Eastern time. So that's sort of been that's sort of been uh, a, a process. That's sort of what I've been up to. You overcame your jet lag. I did. I did. I've been sort of slowly overcoming jet lag. Good to know. OK, Ben. How are you doing? How is your jet lag? I'm good. You know, uh, for someone who is on this show, jet lag the game, I am fairly immune to jet lag. I would say perhaps unusually so. This is something that we we usually see on, on seasons like Japan that that um, Adam and Sam suffer greatly. It's true. And, much uh, more than Ben. And I kind of just get right get right to it. Um, I don't know. Maybe I just don't have strong circadian rhythms or something, mm. but I'm, you know, I'm doing great. Maybe they take all of the jet lag, like the extra jet lag from you. And then you, they have a lot more and you have less. Yeah. Yeah. You know, you know what it's like, Ben, you know what it's like, you know, that story of like the, the girl goes under for her heart surgery and her boyfriend mm -hmm. is like, mm -hmm. you know, I love you or whatever. And she wakes up and she's like, where's my boyfriend? And they were like, who do you think gave you the heart? Right. Yeah. And this is like you, but with jet lag, it's like you wake up in the morning and you're like, I'm not sleepy. Where's Adam? And it's like, who do you think took all the sleep? Who do you think is sleepy? <laughs> it's Adam, right? Adam sleepy. Yeah. Yes. Well, uh, hopefully not sleepy. Sam is with us as well. How are you doing, Sam? Oh, I'm definitely sleepy. Um, yeah. I'm, I'm just emerging from a all weekend long like NyQuil bender, um, mm. and uh, and you know how like whenever you're sick you're like slightly kind of like disassociated yep. um, from reality. Uh, in the midst of that, I flew to New York and like kind of just realizing, kind of just like emerging from that today and realizing that I'm in a different place. <laughs> mm. yes, Sam loves lean late. is what he's trying to say mm. no I was sick I don't do mm -hmm. recreational NyQuil <laughs> listen I think we've all had a, a NyQuil days here and there Yeah, sick or not well now well, now it comes the time when we have to ask you Taryn how you're doing because mm. of course as we are aware you've been sort of putting your mind and body through the gauntlet of kind of seemingly covering Big Brother 24 seven. Yeah, what's yeah. the disassociation from reality that comes Yeah, yeah, that? yeah. What about for you? Oh, quite quite a large one. Uh, today's day 84, um, there is- <laughs> Wow, that sounds so, like the way you said it, sa it sounded so dystopian. <laughs> <laughs> like you sounded like you were a prisoner in a jail waiting to get out. I mean, it's a good number, you know, 1984, uh, exactly. so. There's a there's exactly one week of Big Brother left. Um, yeah. Now the the good thing about the end game it's it's a bad thing for viewers who like to watch you know fervently. It's a good thing for me that uh, the game really slows down. Um, there's there's it not slows nearly down at the end. It does. It, 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 oh, Joe, it please, can please. be it can be faster, but uh, most seasons I would say it slows down because basically at the beginning of the game you have 16 players. Uh, and mm -hmm. you know, there's stuff happening all the time every week. By the end of the game, we have four players, and they have to spend an entire week just evicting one person. Um, uh, I guess that makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. Because I, I got to tell you that, um, and Ben and Sam, I'm curious. I imagine this has happened to you too. You guys have completely fucked up our Twitter algorithms um, because we engage 100%. with you guys a lot on Twitter, and now Twitter is like. This guy wants to see stuff about Big Brother. Mm. And so I sort of have loosely, I mean, I haven't followed everything, but like I haven't watched an episode since I watched that those first episodes and chatted with you about them. But I know like 
all about Angela, a lot of stuff happening with Angela. I've been mm -hmm. seeing a lot of stuff that's like, you're sick, nasty, you look good in yellow. <laughs> I've not yet determined what the source of this is, but I've seen a lot of people posting that. Um, mm -hmm. I know that Rubina was dating maybe a guy. Mm -hmm. uh, I know that that occurred. I've I've sort of been slowly through osmosis, soaking in certain pieces of information. You're you're paying much more attention than I am. It's got I'm I think encountering a similar amount of this stuff, but it's gotten to the point where it's just I see something on my Twitter feed and I'm like I don't I don't understand what this is about, and I'm like oh it's Big Brother. I'm ignoring it, and then I move sure. on. It's quite a I rabbit hole. At all, my YouTube this hasn't happened really to wants me to watch y'all's live streams. About oh, well, brother. that's oh, great. Yeah, um, no, it, it wants me to watch them too. Twitter as well. Twitter as well. Yeah. Really like me algorithms working them. for us, I guess. Uh, yeah, for those for those that uh, that didn't follow, we had um, Ben, Adam, uh, and we attempted to get uh, Sam as well uh, to uh, to watch Big Brother. Uh, they watched the the dual premiere of Big Brother. And uh, I will say you guys watched probably two of the worst episodes of the season. Um, mm. It got very good after that uh, for a little while, which is kind of oh, rare wow. for a uh, modern Big Brother season. Mm. I forget why I couldn't join. Um, I am sorry, and I'm sure I had a really good excuse. I mean, I'm the sure good excuse it. is it's Big Brother. <laughs> sure. I'm intrigued. Uh, I mean, sounds like an interesting concept. My main thought about Big Brother is just like, I feel like the producers of that show really made a mistake by taking a big budget and making it a show where they just have to watch a bunch of people and for how many days, like 90 days straight. Um, mm -hmm. That sounds like a lot of work. Um, I think if you're smart producers, you pitch a, um, you know, uh, a, a, like the amazing race, I feel like is a perfect, and then bring it back to the amazing race, the producers behind the amazing race, all they have to do is travel around the world to some of the most exciting destinations for like 25 days. That's perfect. Then they right. get to go on vacation. Well, and like Survivor, right? That's only like 28 they days or 30 days or whatever, recently. right? Yeah. So it's like, that's pretty that's chill too. Yeah. yeah this yeah. is somewhat coming off the heels of us. Uh, uh, wait, is that, uh, I was about to spoil our next season a little bit. Mm, <laughs> can't do that. Can't do that. Yeah. Well, look. I would also like to say, look, and I know we're doing really well. We're almost eight minutes into the podcast and we haven't discussed jet lag the game at all, but I do have one you last thing. It. You said the thing. I know I did. I did. <laughs> um, I, I, I'd like to say one thing about survivor, which is mm -hmm. that I have been watching survivor and it was driving in this, this, I think is something that once it gets out there, I think people are going to love this observation that I made because I'm really okay. right about it. I've been watching survivor Rome. You, you of course are familiar with Rome on survivor. Yes. Um, ben and Sam, have you been watching Survivor? Do you know who this is? Not this no. season. No. no. Okay. Okay. The, Rome. His voice sounds exactly like a celebrity's voice. And it had been driving me insane trying to figure out who it was. And do you know who it is, Taryn? I don't, but I know what you're talking about. His voice sounds very familiar. It, he sounds exactly like David Diggs from Hamilton, who played Thomas Jefferson in Hamilton. Oh, I I need to listen to it again, but I I bet you're right. It's Sam, producer Sam has popped into mm -hmm. the chat to be like, "You are so right." <laughs> and yes, thank you, Sam. He sounds identical to David Diggs, and I think that huh. that that is. I was searching this to see if anyone else has made this observation. Um. That's your contribution. To I'm the hearing. I'm, I'm, think, I'm listening to both think, of their voices in my head right now, and I'm I'm hearing it for sure. It's like uncanny, in my opinion. Yeah. Um, ben, anyway, can you there's another guy, Sam, who I think sounds like Adam Brody. Interesting. No, I'm I'm just gonna let Adam keep making observations about people's voices who we don't know. <laughs> Adam, okay. who else sounds like done. another person? I'm done now. No, I'm done now. No, I'm done now. I'm done. So I'm jet lagged the game. I've Season eleven. <laughs> Look, I, I, mean, um, I don't mean, and I don't mean this negatively, but you're running this interview, Taryn. So if it goes off the rails, my opinion is that that's on you. I think we're just we 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 can do whatever we want, right? 
That's very true. I am uh, unfortunately in charge and I have no help. Sasha, unfortunately, could not make it to this interview. Um, but uh, but luckily, I enjoy things going off the rails. Uh, and I think 10 minutes of off the rails is perfectly acceptable, um, especially as we continue forward. Let's talk about tag, though, because uh, this is tag three. I know, or at least I think I remember you guys talking about tag two as kind of like an experiment of just repeating the exact thing you did before with minimal uh, alterations. Um, mm -hmm. So what was the approach for tag three with a new location and seemingly slightly altered mechanics? Maybe not mechanics, but like challenge difficulty and stuff like that. Well, we, we thought we they had... would be mad at us if we did it in Charleville again. Well, <laughs> certainly. But like we when we did tag two, there were like things we were tempted to change about the game, but that we decided like ultimately it would be more interesting to just run it back completely without changes. Like the changes we wanted to make were not significant enough. But now that we were doing a new map, we were like, okay, now there are some things that right. while we're doing that, we can we can implement the little tweaks that like from from games that we've played we've learned how to right. make that game better yeah well because i think that the first time we did this uh not to reiterate what you sort of already said but it was like you know i think it was sort of just to prove like if you did it again it would turn out completely differently you know mm -hmm. like one thing about the games that we designed that's very different from for example the amazing race is like you could design you know you design a season of the amazing race and people play it and it's like you couldn't then just run that season of the amazing race back and mm -hmm. like with this uh, certainly the same people because it'd be like well every it you know it the format of it is such that that would not work at all everyone would know exactly what to do and whatever but like this is much more similar to a board game like monopoly or whatever like i feel like sometimes it's like every season we design like a board game like a monopoly board game and then we're like and we're only playing it once <laughs> yeah and it's like well it'd be so crazy to design monopoly and then only play it once like it could turn out so many different ways, even though it has all the same pieces and elements. And so I think it was sort of like, no, like this is a game that can be replayed kind of as many times as you want. It'll turn out different every time and it'll be interesting. But yeah, this time I think it was just like, let's, let's, let's keep it fresh though. I think it was sort of to be like, well, you know, this game can be done in other areas. Right. And let's show you a new part of the world and let's, you know, change things up a little bit with a new location. But I think, our, our our operating philosophy was still like we we had a bias towards keeping things the same in terms of the rules. Like if there was any time there was a rule we weren't sure about changing, we kept it the same because we were like, like we think that the fundamentals of this game are still strong. Because I think we all know that tag is still like a fundamentally flawed and kind of unbalanced game, but mm -hmm. there's kind of no way to fix that entirely without completely changing the format. And we think the format well, be, is quite fun. And to be clear, Sam, what you're referring to is the fact that if you make it to your location, the game ends, which is like well, that, and also like the fact that uh, you know the the fact that like rounds reset, like uh, in a perfectly fair version of this game, you would return to the center point uh, before starting right. a new round. But that kind of not practical, not entertaining, because you just end up with a lot of the same thing over and over again. Uh, like there's a lot of things that sort of make this game slightly less fair, slightly less balanced that I think makes it a lot more entertaining to watch. So I think this is a good example of a, a game format that is like best calibrated for entertainment factor on camera over just like the most fair, most balanced version of the game. And we accept that. Um, but, you know, with some minor tweaks that I think we think have made it more balanced at least. What do you think was like the most significant um, rule change, like aside from the location? Like what was the rule change that you think had the biggest impact on this third tag season? Well, I guess it's not a rule change. The biggest change was the challenges. Yeah, for sure. Right. Which was that we made the challenges harder and much more failable. Mm -hmm. um, in terms of rule change, I would say the most significant was increasing the penalty of the double up. I think that we had seen in tag two, we sort of learned at the end of tag one and then exploited throughout tag two mm -hmm. that the double up power up was overpowered. Um, 
And so through the consequence of making the penalty 3x uh, a veto, and then also, again, connected to that, that the challenges were harder and more failable, combined, significantly impacted, I think, gameplay. I'd say that was definitely, it was sort of a a challenge difficulty change in tandem with a rule change that together, I think, made a big impact. Yeah. We, we sort of tried to make the rule tweaks as inconspicuous as possible. Um, mm -hmm. Like, we didn't really want the audience to necessarily even notice. Uh, we kind of just wanted it to impact our gameplay, and therefore, like, mm -hmm. it was really just recalibration of, like, uh, how much things cost, and 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 as Adam said, especially kind of the difficulty uh, and failability of challenges. And I, th I think with both of those things, it was just a matter of of making decisions harder whenever we can like mm -hmm. both of those were things that we felt had become kind of rote where like it always makes sense to pull a challenge because the risk of not being able to complete it was pretty low before and like the risk of being forced into a veto was pretty low and so it basically always made, made sense to pull a challenge and it wasn't that interesting of a decision when you did it same thing with the uh, double up like it had become sort of so advantageous that it was very rarely an interesting decision yeah. and so we had adjusted those things hoping that and i think successfully making it such that anytime players did those things it was a harder decision yeah i i think um i think it translated that like the rule changes didn't feel significant um very much felt like the same game uh with just slightly tweaked things and uh and what i found interesting about this third season was that clearly the approach this time was so much more refined uh strategically for each of the each of you as players where like you all were you know if you're if the first game of tag is just like go 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 as much as possible and the second game of tag is like maybe i should try to do a trick here the third game of tag was kind of like Maybe I should fake a trick here and then go over here. <laughs> and then, yeah. Um, and then, but then the other side is also like, well, let me let me circumvent this and go over here. Uh, and I like some very funny scenarios, of course. That uh, obviously the big thing to talk about is the uh, the tracker. But um, but uh, but strategically, was this something that you were conscious of that like you were all approaching it on a sort of like higher level this time? Well, I think that there was an interesting thing where. Um... In part, I think that the strategy was changed through experience where there was a lot more trickery we were interested in doing. But I think the other thing is that the geography was such that tricks became more necessary, which mm -hmm. I think is a subtler distinction. Like, I don't think it was just us being like, well, now we know more tricks, so let's do more tricks. At least on my part, it was like my geography was so tough mm -hmm. and disadvantageous that it was like the only way to get through this area is. I'm going to have to pull off like multiple tricks and fake outs. Otherwise it's not possible. So I think in part, some of it was created by necessity, but it seemed like uh, Sam, you had something to say as well. Um, what did I have to say? I agree. That's why. <laughs> yes. Uh, uh, well, of course, actually what I will say is like, I, I do think that uh, like uh, we definitely have gotten a lot more, um, uh i advanced with our tricks and all that but i think we've also gotten better at articulating what our strategies are and we all want to seem smart mm -hmm. on camera mm -hmm. um we all want to seem like we're in control and have a plan but yeah i totally agree that like the the we've seen in the past how like just the combination of luck and consistently good gameplay um could lead to any moment in previous tag seasons turning into a winning run that really didn't prove to be the case this time. You kind of needed the combination of luck, circumstance, and a strong plan to have any good shot of, of breaking out from that core area, really all down to just like choke points, just a lot of mm -hmm. choke points. And you got to figure out a way to get the choke points. Yeah, I mean, I agree that like maybe the the one flaw of the season is like, I think the map was even a little too choke pointy. Like we really got boxed into that area of North and yeah. kind of Eastern Italy. I think certainly more than we expected because the, the the tricky bet and i think what we've tried to uh kind of convey to the audience is like it's even greater than what the map kind of makes it seem yeah. like 
because of just schedules and mm -hmm. and kind of the the like on the map it might look like there is a route around uh like the example that i've been using is like milan like it looks like there are routes that can kind of route you around milan but the truth is that in practice it's not because someone in milan can get it's like if you have milan here and like a route here and a route here apologies to the audio listeners uh and wait 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 like, wait can i share my screen is that doable? Uh, should I be. have it up? Yeah. Okay. Wait, wait, wait. What do you, if you have something got... naughty on your screen accidentally? No, I don't have anything naughty. <laughs> is this working? Yeah, here it is. Oh, good. Visual aid. Uh, yeah. Wow. So like, if you point to random route around the lawn, Adam. Yeah, like yeah, yeah. Deviating. You're like, oh yeah, I could do this. But it's like, no, you can't. Yeah, I think specifically, like, at one point I was looking at, about how to get from, like, is that Bergamo to, like, Como? Sure. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah you and, like, that looks like, oh. like you can totally do that. But it is so much faster to go via Milan, even via those two points. So it means that, you know, even if you can physically not go through Milan, someone in Milan who's trying to cut you off can so easily pop up. So you see, mm -hmm. yeah, like it'll route you through Milan. Like, see, it doesn't take you this way. It mm -hmm. takes you down. You go, you don't technically go to Milan, but you get really close and then you go up there. Right. And that's mm -hmm. actually, I think, now that involves a bus. So actually, oh, really? you wouldn't even be able to use a bus. You would have to, uh, you'd have to, yeah. So it would be even, it'd be even worse, I think. So, anyway. yeah, someone in Milan who's trying to cut you off, they just quickly take that right up to Como and they've got you. So, and it was the same deal for like, uh, uh, you know, a lot of Adam's um, kind of potential escape routes. Cause, cause Adam, mm -hmm. Adam and I sort of shared a potential escape route from this area via Innsbruck, uh, which we both kind of uh, uh, sort mm -hmm. of, well, Adam never really wholeheartedly uh, tried for that, but like, it was sort of the same issue. I there. was always really skeptical of it. Yeah. yeah. Oh, wait a minute. Um, this isn't, we, we can affect this later, right? Cause I just realized that in my search history on Apple maps are a ton of spoilers for the next season of Gemini. <laughs> That's what I was worried about. <laughs> <laughs> Um, we, yeah, we might, uh, we might just blur that out, I guess, or maybe just cut out the map part. Uh, in the, okay. The producer, producer, Sam says it's fine. <laughs> yeah. We'll figure something out. That. <laughs> I think that it's fine. You hold an, an incomprehensible amount of power now, Taryn. <laughs> Truly. Um, so, okay. So you're talking about choke points. Um, this, this map. I guess had more choke points than you expected. So what then becomes the plan for like future seasons of tag? If there are going to be any, uh, do you want to find a new map with less choke points or figure out a way to make the checkpoint, the choke points less, uh, intrusive I'm speculate. Um, it's tough to say. I mean, I think that what we have found is that finding a new tag map is harder than you would think. I think mm -hmm. that was what we found with this, where we were like, I think we started out and we were like, you could play tag wherever. And then we were like, oh man, you can really only play tag in like a few areas. And even this area, which is like, I mean, this is a pretty dense area of rail and it still ended up being pretty tough. I mean, largely yeah. because of the Alps. So like, I do think we've found like, a, new maps are not easy, right? Like, and again, this was still in Western Europe. You know, like it wasn't even mm. that different of an area. There's even a little bit of overlap in this map. Um, I the think, real trouble of it is is the triangle. It's that it's got to yeah. be the three equidistant parts. Like, mm. I think it'd be a lot easier to do, like, you know, in Japan, for example, you could do it like a tug of war, like going mm. up and down, but you couldn't, you can't get that, that triangle. The, the thing that we sort of, reverse engineered and, and kind of like realized what made the original tag map work so well was that it was sort of like the center of it was sort of equidistant to the cores of multiple different rail networks mm -hmm. and that's kind of what you want it turns out where it's like you have the big hub of paris off to the edge of the map you have like the big hub of like 
uh, Frankfurt and kind of that whole area and a lot of the German ones off to another end. You have Basel sort of at the other end. You sort of don't want like a big rail hub too close to the center because then that just becomes the center of gravity. And that's, you know, we, we sort of started to see that effect here with like Bologna to a certain extent. Um, if the Venice. game had played out a little bit differently, yeah, yeah or like Venice. Venice for sure. If the game had played out a different, a bit differently, Milan could have definitely um, served mm-hmm. as that. So like this map worked pretty well from that standpoint, not perfectly, but like the problem is like, you know, for example, theoretically, if we were to try to do a tag Spain, the problem is like having Madrid in the center it wouldn't lead to great gameplay because then it would just be right. like one person goes out. You on this leave line, Madrid, you come back yeah. to Madrid, and then you come yeah, back you to Madrid, Madrid and, you and then come you go back this, to and Madrid. that's boring. Um, so it's like what, we, what we've tried to look for is like where is a good zone where we can overlap? Um, mm-hmm. And we certainly have other ideas. I, I, I don't think we want to fully, uh, anytime we even speculate, everyone just takes that as gospel. Um, yeah. mm-hmm. uh, but we know there are other good zones, but it's tricky. But what I will say is like, I do think we all like the idea of trying to take this game and plop it onto a different bit of Europe. Um, uh, we we genuinely have not, like, I don't think we've, I can't even think about uh, any time that we've discussed amongst ourselves whether or not we're doing tag again. Um, no. So no, we, we genuinely, we genuinely have, have no plans. Uh, but I will say personally, I like this format. I, I like it as a uh, as like a summer activity, uh, as, as like a summer tradition. And if we can mm-hmm. keep finding interesting maps, I imagine we'll keep doing it. Cool. Uh, I do think it's going to be really hard to ever do it not in Europe. I just don't yeah. know that anywhere yes. else is going to have the right interconnectedness, density, et cetera. Like, I just don't know if anyone yeah. else can. Yeah, when you were talking about that, like needing multiple hubs, basically, like in uh equal distance to or from the center it's like yeah it, i it's hard to think of any other area of the world where that works um no. have we and it's Adam like, ben, have we talked about where we almost did this season no, no we've never revealed this oh, i've been scared to then. and we shouldn't and we shouldn't <laughs> say it because <laughs> i'll just say that we really were mad. very close to doing it in a different yeah on it we were very close to using a significantly different map it was sort of the thing where we did like most of the pre-production on mm-hmm. a different map. And at a certain point we, we like changed gears, but yeah, more, we like, most likely this was going to be a quite... different map. Yeah. It just... and, you, and you think that it probably wouldn't have worked out. Certainly from a gameplay perspective, not as well. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's right. I'm glad we shifted to this map as well. I'll say. Um, yeah. Anyway. Well, can leave can leave that for common speculation about what that map was oh boy uh speaking of strategy um ben you also had some uh interesting strategy coming in uh that you wrote on a piece of paper um that uh how long had you planned to uh write your idk i'm just trying to freak him out strategy oh i thought of that the night before because <laughs> um i don't know i think that uh it's it's fun to get ideas lodged in Sam's brain um, and coming off of the last season, you know, I I had uh, emerged victorious. And so I, I was in a good position to intimidate my opposition. <laughs> um, and I felt like that, you know, maybe if I can psych them out a little bit, that was uh, it was a good opportunity. Mm. How were you psyched out, Sam? I look, I feel like I should remind the viewers that I've always considered Ben a formidable opponent opponent. Um, Yes, true. And I fully respect his abilities. And therefore, I've always been psyched out equally by Ben because I respect him as a competitor. Mm. This, however, never know what he's going to come up with. This this particular instance did not change my worry. Because he was already maximally worried. And this season did not, um, let's say, escalate my (laughs) concerns. Which is exactly what I wanted you to think. Right, that's what you want. (laughs) 
Yeah, if we were talking, if we were putting this in survivor terms, this is like security. this is like Tony Vlachos on Game Changers. He's he's just lowering his threat level to come back in later. Exactly. Exactly. On game cha- on not on Game Changer. Mm. On the on Dropout TV's hit show Game Changer. <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> The season of television of the Survivor. Uh, oh, Game it Changers. was called. Its subtitle was Game Subtitled Changers. Survivor I was like, Game Changers, I've yeah. seen every damn episode of Game Changers, and I never heard of Tony Vlados or whatever it is. That said. <laughs> um, okay, so let's let's talk a little bit about the uh, the runs. Uh, obviously, Adam, you kicked off here uh, with a, with a very successful first run. I thank thought. you. I was proud of my first run. I was I yeah. was pleased with it. I have to say. Um, you really got stumped by the coins. Look, I, I, I have a lot to say about the coins and I talk about it on the layover podcast, so I won't Mm. necessarily repeat myself here. Yeah, I, I, here, I listened to a couple minutes, uh, or or maybe like the first 20 minutes of of y'all's recap episode. Um, and, uh, I will rant on out of behalf as I did on the oh, wait. Did you talk about it? I haven't watched your, I haven't listened to your recap. Do you yeah, talk about they, the points? They spouted the same bullshit about mm. rhythm. Oh my God. <laughs> I, I didn't talk now. You got to get out. into it. I'm calling you out. Then I, then I'm going to do it. Then I am going to do my rant. Did Sasha, was it Sasha? Not you. Is that your, excuse? it's possible. Sasha. I think I saw it in a comment about rhythm. Um, <sighs> Taryn, there were, it's so, possible. There were so many people commenting reaching out to me dming me being like hey man just so you know the reason that you couldn't get head seven times in a row is that you kept stopping in the middle of your coin flipping and it threw off your rhythm and that's why it kept failing and i just would like to say as clearly as i can that these people are wrong (laughs) they are wrong and they're mistaken about this i just can't emphasize enough that it is a literal (laughs) coin flip. It is literally a coin flip. You think that there's some sort of pattern or rhythm because what you're seeing is a heavily edited down thing where it seems like there are obvious streaks that I go on with great regularity. You're like, oh no, Adam would be in a bad random streak and then he would suddenly lock into a heads 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 that's because i was flipping the coin for 45 minutes and you saw about three minutes of that and so it's not an accurate representation of the actual coin flipping randomness and patterns if you had been there the whole time like i was who was making the decisions you would have known that it was obvious that it was random sequences i would get two heads and then two tails and then a heads and a tails and a heads and a tails then three tails then two heads then there was no rhythm situation happening and in fact if you were to like look at the odds that i would have just succeeded like naturally like i would have had like this is exactly what would have happened like that if you do it completely randomly the odds that i would have like gotten a bunch of like locked it like several in a row or whatever like that would be entirely entirely predicted not because of a rhythm but because of randomness i cannot emphasize enough it was random and as sam pointed out on the podcast i'll just say the if i had somehow managed to figure out a way to flip the coin that wasn't random it would have been cheating it would have been against the rules would it have been it had to be a random coin flip. Well, I had yeah, because the coin with the intention of because I could have. Let's be clear. If I had been trying to do some bullshit, you know what I could. It, mm-hmm. it just said flip the coin. I could have done. Oh, heads. <laughs> oh, oh. Maybe you could then oh, specify a number of oh, times oh. it needs to be flipped. <laughs> it had to be a random flip. This is implicitly yeah, yeah. understood by everyone, including me, who wrote the challenge mm-hmm. and knew it needed to be a random flip. Truly, I don't think that anything has frustrated me more in all of jet lag comments than the people saying this. Like so is, he's got, and he's else. gotten frustrated many times. No, as true. listeners the reason, of the layover may know. And the reason is it's the and I and I know that I'm still going on legend. I've been talking a long time. It's the tone. It's the tone. <laughs> it's the tone 
that people are taking with me where they're completely wrong. <laughs> I am right. I know this to be true. But they're talking to me like I'm so stupid. Just a <laughs> stupid, sad little idiot who spent 45 minutes flipping a coin because he didn't understand that he was breaking his rhythm. And they're like, hey, hey, just by the way, I know you didn't think of this. Poor little stupid idiot, dumb, <laughs> dumb idiot guy. The problem was that you were throwing off your rhythm. That's why you failed. And it's people talking to each other being like, what an idiot. He was throwing off his rhythm. And then a million people commenting under that. Like, I know I was screaming at the TV. I can't believe Adam didn't realize he was throwing off his rhythm. No, you're all wrong. You're all wrong. You're wrong about this. Thank you. I've Listen, I very much relate to you on this. This I feel like I go through this with Big Brother commentary constantly. <laughs> uh, it, it, so the idea is that uh, is that like by maintaining a rhythm that physically you would be in a pattern of hitting it, or is it like a yeah. metaphysical thing? No, I think that they literally physically like thought that it's like well, the coin he's locked in to like you know, it's flipping 25 times and he catches it every time. And so he's like mm -hmm. locked into like, it's like a hot hand thing. You know, it's like when you get hot yeah. in basketball shooting threes, which that is real. Right. Um, this is not that. No. Well, uh, rhythm or no rhythm. Uh, this, this was definitely a challenge. <laughs> um, oh, yeah. No, it was very bad. It was not good. What happened? To yeah. Oh, so I my I did one question, which which was that like this isn't what cost you the run though, right? Like this isn't like if you had man yeah. managed to get the challenge complete that you would have been able to escape because the train was that that time regardless, right? Yeah, what cost him his run? Yeah, was well, those really trains were also fundamental super strategy, <laughs> right? Uh, so yeah, I mean, well, I would say what lost me the run was my fundamental geography, um, which is that I just got extremely boxed in there. Um, mm. you know, the, the truth too, is that just like the, the trains, the Slovenian trains are just kind of totally chaotic. Like the train, the completely random delays and stuff, you know? So like, honestly, what I really should have done is I should have just like stood at the train station and just seen if a train heading North showed up. Cause like the schedules we had access to in our phones seemed completely disconnected from reality. So I was all focused on like, well, there's a train headed North at this time. I got to wait for my train. And it was like that, like Ben and I were there for 45 minutes waiting, like when that train was supposed to arrive and it never came like a train going the mm -hmm. other way showed up at one point. But like, so really what I should have done is I just should have gone straight to the train station and just been like the next train that shows up, I will get on it. Like, mm -hmm. yeah. And just I do think another know, another uh, defending ourselves uh, point that I want to do. That's always our favorite activity. Uh, is that like Adam's zone certainly had border difficulties, where it, it was very difficult for him to get out of Italy. However, mm -hmm. that is to a certain extent self balancing as a runner. Uh, Adam might disagree. Not no, no, how it's it played out. If I get out, who exactly. boy. Mm, yeah. You know what I mean? and, and I think Ben and I, and you can actually see this in Ben and I's behavior, where we were incredibly risk averse on that run. Um mm -hmm. because we knew that like we would be fine as long as Adam didn't leave Italy. Or or really just, right. you know, I mean, at least the Italian trade network, which happened yeah. in, in the end. Um, because if he had if he had gotten one of those, you know, time perfectly timed trains, it would have been really difficult for us to catch up. And I think we would have been like it honestly, if at, if the train schedules had worked out and Adam was able to take one of those Slovenian trains, he probably would have gotten close to Vienna. And at that point, I honestly think that Ben and I, we would have probably I at least I would have probably advocated for us to backtrack to Venice and take a flight to Vienna. Um at yeah, that and that would have been real bad. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure. So, I'm sure you've answered this question before, but like, what is the contingency if Adam just if like the first run just wins right away? Uh, We've talked about this before. Yeah, <laughs> there is. You would bet. No, you got. You got. I mean, the game. The game is over. Then they win. But 
I mean, like in terms of our logistical sort of plan, I think that like we would most likely take the time that we would have been in Europe to like run it back, run it for a second, to mm. just do a game again and like make that a extra bonus special yeah. one that yeah. we would put on Nebula. I think something. that it's been a thing where it's like it would depend on how early it happened. It's like, mm -hmm. well, you know, if somebody wins like midday day two or end of day two, it's like, well, that's I think that's the game. And maybe we do, you know, a little special at the end. I think if it's like the first runner wins at the end of day one, I think it would be like you probably you probably just go back to the beginning and play the whole game again. And then you release that first run as like a Nebula exclusive or something <laughs> like, I don't, I don't know. know. I mean, Sam, I, mean, what there's you... something, I think there's something kind of fun about the idea that like you could be watching a season of tag and not feel like, Oh, it's only episode one or two. Therefore they can't reach their destination because they might just run it back again for the next three episodes. I mean, my take is that I mean we've never really discussed this in like a formal plan or anything because uh, uh, you know uh, it's not, I mean we've we've talked about it in the hypotheticals but at least my take is that like sort of the the bargain of like it it could happen the truth is like in this format it could happen and it would be interesting if it happened so I would always uh, I would always uh, say that like we should like if adam were to win his first you know in first run and that ends up just mm -hmm. being like a two episode thing like we still upload that to youtube because like that's kind of yeah no, that's kind of right. what we yeah, I mean, that's that's the um, season yeah that is the season yeah and 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 i think the most logical thing at that point is likely to play for seconds and then just post that to nebula um mm -hmm. since it's kind of a smaller appeal um that is that is genuinely kind of a risk we take with these seasons and it hasn't happened yet but like if we keep doing this every summer it'll probably happen eventually um i mean uh, it got close season two i yeah. mean mm -hmm. i was and, one better timed connection away from mm -hmm. like the game ends start of day two yeah and, and so like that's when i at least I, I don't think we ever you know got i mean we certainly didn't talk with adam and ben i don't remember talking about this in tremendous detail with you then, but I remember thinking about it and this was like the plan that I was thinking we should do in that case. Um, but uh, it's sort of the trade off, I guess, uh, for us not having to do pre production work for these seasons, for the most part, uh, beyond finding a new map, mm -hmm. I guess. Um, so uh, it might mean that we have to film the next season way sooner. <laughs> uh, all right. Well, Adam, there was one other thing that you had some uh, Slovenian helpers um the slovenian teens yes uh just because it, it it seemed like it was a little unclear to you in the moment if they were actually trying to help you or if they were yeah. trying to help sam and ben or also, if can they I were ask trying to help no everyone question. do yeah. we know that they were teens they were very like adult looking for teens they may have been they may have been sort of in their you know early 20s i could believe that they had the God, vibe of teens. Curious. They were. They, they did, but just teens. like they, they totally could have been older than me. Um, like how they looked, but I mean that could go in a lot of cases. But um, anyway, I was just curious. Um, well, did you ever discover the true motivations behind? <laughs> <laughs> We've. I think that looking back through the footage, he was trying to help me because that's what it seemed like to me. Yeah, he points Sam and Ben. A direction that I am not in, right? Mm -hmm. He points you a direction that is not dissimilar from where I am, but like there's a mall kind of near where I was along a different road. And what he reported back to me, and looking at the footage, I believe this is the case. He was trying to get you to go there, which is not exactly where I was. And then I could have gone around you. And then I, I also, think... I mean, there's a decent. Sorry, go ahead, Ben. Well, I think ultimately, if he wasn't trying to help you, he wouldn't have come back to you. He would have exactly. stuck with us. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I mean, and there is something like, very funny about the idea of like him playing both sides. Uh, but yeah. <laughs> but I agree. <laughs> um, well, the other thing is like there's footage you don't see. Where, like he offered to stash me in his house. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, I mean, my philosophy was like, you know, 
while this teen seems like he's trying to help me out, I don't know this teen. And like, I'm not going to go anywhere that is not an open public place with him. Mm -hmm. Should he, because the worst case scenario in any situation is that we lose our phones with our footage on them. And so I was like, my number one priority during this whole interaction was like on the, if look, I think that this teen, you know, was, was trying to help me out because he thought that what we were doing was sort of fun and strange, but I was like, on the off chance that my camera equipment is going to be stolen, like I need to top priority is protect against that. Cause if the phone's mm -hmm. gone, we don't have an episode one. So that was sort of uh, another thing I was keeping in mind. Well, it's also against the rules. You're not allowed yeah. to. Well, oh yeah, yeah. Well, his house would have been against, against the rules. Yeah. yeah. But like, even when I was with them, like I was like, I'm mm -hmm. going to make sure that I am keeping my wits about me and my mm -hmm. phone. Yeah. Close, I, close to me. I don't know if I, I think I mentioned this to Ben. Uh, I received some allegations in my Twitter DMs. That... Well, look, I was not going to bring this up, but I too okay, received not bring allegations in my Twitter DMs about the teens. But I do not believe that it would be right to accuse these teens of anything. We have no proof of these teens, and we have put their faces prominently sort of in public, and I don't think it would be appropriate to air out any allegations against them. And That's I, fair, but I, what I was going to say I is think I it, think those allegations are disinformation. No, it, it look, it I also don't like think a, they're true. Like I also post. don't think they're true. And anyone could have anyone could have said anything about anyone at That's any true. point. Well, because I also believe that it is the case that should the teens have wanted to rob me, they still could have done it. Despite me trying to keep my wits about me, very it would have true. been very easily for them to have grabbed my phone and run off. Adam is highly mm -hmm. robbable. Mm -hmm. Well, Ben mm -hmm. is much more robbable than me, but I would be the second most robbable. You I'm are the Adam least robbable the because you can run know. so much. Mm. Is, is the so strategy to say that, say that you're live streaming and not just recording? Does that help, you think? That, that is smart. Um, yes, I actually think that that helps a ton. Yeah. Um, and that's actually something we should start saying. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. I think the thing is it was not clear to him whether we were recording or live streaming because mm -hmm. he said later he thought we were streamers and yeah. so I actually think that probably like that was hugely helpful is that like you have no idea if you are live on camera right now and I think that actually is a good idea we should probably start saying that we do definitely like act much more like live streamers in what we yeah. do that's true than yeah. YouTubers uh, one of the suggestions we had on our uh, recap podcast, uh, and I know that you get lots of suggestions for guests, but if you ever did decide to change up the teams, uh, that Adam's partner should be the Slovenian team. Uh, mm. <laughs> mm -hmm. I think he that's was very charming. Exciting. He was very charming. He did. He certainly had like a tr like a charisma about him that I think was was reflected in all of the sort of the friends that he uh, sort of kept seeing it really was like extremely funny like he just would keep like he had this little phone and he just kept like calling people who would sort of show up in various areas and dap each other up and like a specific really little a phone experience yeah no it like it really felt like sort of 20 years ago or something like calling your friend being like hey man like let's meet up over by the like the stop and shop and like hang out and like stroll around. That's how they, they had this an guy escape his friends. <laughs> they had like actually like a really sick vibe that I really actually dug. Like all of these Slovenian teens just like dressed in their like athleisure, just like calling each other and meeting up and just like every time like really dapping each other up and doing like a big complicated handshake every time they would see one of their friends. Would you maybe call it a sick nasty vibe? I thought that it was sick, nasty, and I thought it looked really great in yellow. Yeah. <laughs> um, all right. Well, you do get caught here. Um, Sasha really enjoyed uh, your attempt at hiding um, as yeah. Ben stared at you. Um, oh, can yeah. I, have I ranted enough about that? Okay. We, no, we don't need to rant about that. Just Nobody that understands what a fuck, what a, a subway, a sub, like all, everyone was really annoyed about the fact that I was like, where is the subway? And they were like, because they were like, Nova Gorica doesn't have a subway. But we're not talking about like the New York City underpass. Metro. Yeah. It's an yeah. underpass. That's what the underpasses are called. Mm -hmm. And normally yeah. and, they have underpasses. Typically where you would go to hide if you were trying to hide at a train well, station. Yeah. But typically you'll have an underpass or an overpass over the platforms because normally mm -hmm. 
They don't expect you, you walk to across walk tracks. across railroad tracks <laughs> to get to your platform. So that's why no, I was oh, right. Yes, of, you were trying to get across. Yes, I remember now. Yeah. Yeah. It took a lot of encouraging from the Slovenian teams for me to go over the railroad tracks. Mm -hmm. Like I was like, no, I don't think so. And they kept just being like, it's the only way across. And I was eventually I was like, <laughs> okay. Yeah. I mean, they were right. Uh, well, that kicked off Sam's run. Of course, this is where you rack up uh, all the coins. You get into the standoff uh, and uh, you finally get to do the puzzle box. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Sasha and I agreed that uh, we likely would not have completed this puzzle box either. I appreciate that. Um, I What I don't like is that Amy apparently tested this on like a lot of her friends. <laughs> and they all were able to do it super quickly. Um, and it's clear that just Amy has a, a very high caliber of people she socializes with. I don't think uh, Sasha and I would qualify as friends. <laughs> I, mean, I think we would get the that. Puzzle box I don't think we qualify minutes, as good enough at puzzles to I be Amy's friends. I don't think you cut it as, as yeah. an Amy friend group member. Um, Maybe someday. If I train my puzzles, I would love to get there, you know? Yeah. Yeah, but uh, to be honest, I, I really just consistently struggle with uh, puzzles. Uh, like like these sorts of things. Uh, uh, if, if, if Ben and Adam want me to lose more, they should add more of these because I'm just not good at them. I'm not, you would I'm, think. I Sam feel like I'm just not good at like lateral thinking. He has the vibe of someone who does puzzles, but he's he's never solving puzzles. See, like everyone's amazed running. when I when I say that I, I I don't even know how to play chess really. Um, mm. Everyone thinks, everyone seems to think that I'd be like the kind of person who's into like chess and that sort of stuff. But no, I mean just because you're um, smart. I'm into brain rot. I'm into scrolling <laughs> on TikTok for hours. Um, and uh, you also did the the date date an old thing, which I thought was a great title for a challenge. Um, yeah. and, uh, you guys I got get to, to the point of the podcast decisions. where you defended me. That's where I ended listening to your recap. Podcast. Oh, you, oh, you heard you us defend you. And then you were like, mm -hmm. ah, no more of this. That was enough. These people are clearly not, uh, uh yeah. <laughs> what was, what was I, your logic? Wait, I'm curious. You thought that he should have gotten credit. I, I felt like it. Now, listen, it's you guys make the challenges. Uh, so, you know, you guys all agreed. I personally felt like if you nail the original creation date, I think that should count. Well, let me, let I, me, let me, let me, let me, I'd, I'd love to engage on this. Please. Um, did you bring up the ship of Theseus? I did. <laughs> Great. So everyone keeps bringing up the ship of Theseus. And so yeah. I would, I would now like to just take a moment if I, if I could, if nobody minds. Um, the ship of Theseus is, of course, a thought experiment, as we all know, mm -hmm. about if the, if the ship of Theseus, you know, is slowly rotting away and piece by piece, you know, a piece gets taken out, a piece is replaced until eventually all of the pieces are new. Is it still the ship of Theseus or not? Um, and I think that the ship of Theseus is a very interesting thought experiment. And what's the answer to it? Who could say? Um, let me now, Taryn, present to you a different thought experiment. This is what I call the bridge that Sam was wrong about that experiment. <laughs> and it is as follows. If you had the ship of Theseus and then the entire ship of Theseus mm. burned to the ground into ash and then you built a new ship based on the same plans as the ship of Theseus, is that the ship of Theseus? Well, as and I then that say, ship is burns certainly... to the ground. And, oh yeah, sorry. <laughs> and then that ship burned to the ground again and then you rebuilt another one. And then I believe that ship burned to the ground a third time. Yeah. And then you built a fourth ship based Man, on the really plans. you really think they'd change up the plans at some point. Uh, I would ask you, is that the original ship of Theseus? I would say the plans are still the original. Sure, but is the ship? I mean, that's. I guess that's the question of the challenge. Is it is it about the plans or the or the 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 bridge itself? I would say it's I think the truth is that it stuff. was probably a poorly planned card because uh, <laughs> um, there's a lot of scenarios where this happens uh, with old buildings um, and we probably needed to plan on one way or the other. And we I think I think happens. that's and again, like uh, the, I'm not dying on this hill by any means, but I think that's where it came from was just like to me, the spirit of the challenge is figure out when this thing was like originally created 
yeah. because it's going to be very difficult to determine that this was actually like rebuilt at a certain time. Yeah, but I think that there are a few parts of that that are complicated. Like one is like, well, you know, it's a wooden bridge. That's so, like, true. I, yeah. <laughs> part of the thing for you is look at it and be like, does this wood look 600 years old? Maybe not. Okay. Okay. Right. Well, we've already. This is this is now just like the highlights of our rants on the layover podcast podcast. But uh, <laughs> the reason I did the Why bridge did you say is because twice. Th no, because <laughs> this is a recap of the highlights of the layover podcast. Oh, podcast. I see. Podcast. This is the. Yeah. I see. I know you're. You're. I totally good. Totally good. Sorry. Um, Go ahead. But the the I went to the bridge because I thought it would look sick, and it did. It was a great bridge. There were plenty of these shitty little like European center yeah, town buildings yeah, that are a dime a dozen that it could have done. Uh, but the bridge looked sick. And I don't, well, I do yeah. regret it. But actually, no, I don't <laughs> regret it. I won. That was great. It's true. Um, uh, yeah. But the, I think the part to focus on is the fact that I actually nailed it in all ways yeah, except you did for nail the winning it. No, way. It's impressive. Um, impressive. It was impressive. No, I, I think really, because we did take this seriously. I mean, because we did it, I think we said this in the podcast, like Sam checked with us. He was like, do you think this mm -hmm. should count or not? Like in real time. And Ben and I, like our original bias was towards like, oh, well, you know, if parts of it, we were sort of thinking shit with these. You're like, well, if parts of it were replaced or whatever, that's probably fine. But then we read the Wikipedia page and it literally was like, mm -hmm. I think the exact phrase was, it was burned to the ground. <laughs> It and like fully point, didn't we exist like, for like a couple of years. Um, yeah, like we were like, one point. well, yeah, that's it, now. Now you're talking about like it, it didn't exist for a while. That 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 kind of does change things a little bit. Yeah, but it they was were the like, Nazis' fault. They were like, this, <laughs> well, there you go. Back around. Like, based on the designs of the original bridge, but it certainly yeah, wasn't like, like a recreation. There's like a lot of things about yeah, it that were just. It was like, just too. like that. It's just and within it's also it's like at a certain point the way the card is written is the way the card is written and like. We yeah. can make like slight judgment based things to be like, well, we all know exactly what we meant if there's like a, a more of a wording error. But in this case, it was like, well, like we hadn't really considered this when we wrote the card. And like, I think that this based on how it is written, it's definitely doesn't count. Yeah. yeah. I, I mean, you guys know, I, I feel like uh, when it comes to stuff like this, like I'm never going to get hung up on it watching a season of jet lag because not to like you know be overly uh complimentary here but like i i have like faith in you guys that you're gonna like make a fair decision Aww. on like what you intended as the challenge um so like it it makes a lot of sense to me that there's even more detail on this <laughs> um all right so uh you eventually get into the standoff this is when when things really start to kick into focus that like a tracker could have been helpful. Uh, obviously, you guys have talked about the tracker a lot at this point. Um, and you could make an argument that it wouldn't have mattered, sure, uh, especially because you eventually win, Sam. But um, but like, I think this becomes a recurring topic throughout the season is that uh, the tracker could have been helpful to a lot of the runs. Um, I guess I guess there's not much to add on to that beyond the fact that like, are there any changes planned for the tracker or do you guys think that you'll probably just maybe use it more often in the future i think well, we we don't even have like thursday planned um, <laughs> yeah yeah but i think it's fair to say that like we like there are certain things that like we could adjust to make us do something more but like i do genuinely think we left this season being like we were probably wrong about that when we were playing. And if we played it again, we might have played it a different way. And so yeah. I, I don't really think we would need to make changes. Like we could make it even cheaper if we wanted to. Re like we made it cheaper this season because yeah. we recognized that we had such a strong bias against doing it. Mm -hmm. And so we were like, we need to be able to trick ourselves into using it when we're in game, even though we know it's I a good idea now. And it's I honestly just think that we we just all forget about it. <laughs> <laughs> that well, too. Well, well, I'll also I've I have two things to say. One mm -hmm. is I agree we were wrong not to use the tracker. Like I agree that we were wrong not to use the tracker. And I think that truthfully, the change is just that next time we played, we would be like, we should use the tracker more. Right. But I will add that it's a lot easier 
as a viewer mm -hmm. to notice the times when the tracker would have been helpful and be upset that people don't buy it. Whereas like most of the time in most games of tag from the past, at least, and even in significant sections of this game, buying the tracker at most points would have been stupid because they were exactly where you thought they were. Mm -hmm. Like, I think this game had the greatest instance of people not. I actually think that like in the past two seasons of tag, there were very few instances where people weren't basically where you assumed that they were. I mean, I guess I thought that you guys weren't at the train station in Massey Palace U, but that was because of like a different issue because I couldn't even use my phone to look at how long it would take to get from somewhere to somewhere. I knew you were broadly in Paris at that point, at least like I had a general sense of where you were like, and so I think that was sort of a new thing this season of like, because I think of the train delays in part, like on the Italian system, it was like people ended up being in surprising places more often than expected. Yeah. Well, and, and also I think because of like, our like more advanced gameplay. More advanced gameplay too. That was another part yeah. of it. And so I think part of this is like, you know, to, to defend Sam for a minute here, like you look at, season four of jet lag the game battle for america when you know obviously the context is very different and the tracker was much more relatively expensive in that time but it's like sam bought the tracker because he, it, they thought they knew where we were going but they didn't know where we were going and he was like well you know if it turns out we're wrong about this it would change a ton of our strategy and then it turns out that we just were where they thought and then it was a waste of you know, resources, right? And mm -hmm. I think in our case, it's like, that was, I wasn't a totally unreasonable assumption to be like, it's just going to confirm what I already think. Because in the yeah, past- Yeah, I think that's a good point. Is that the, you don't know what you don't know. And you don't know, right. like if you didn't anticipate that they could be anywhere else, but they are, which is when you need to know it the most, then you also yeah. can't anticipate that you need to be using it. Um, so, right. yeah. It's I, I, it's a tricky thing to time correctly, I guess. I would I would imagine the longer into your run you go, the more the more you yeah. want to use it probably because the that's the yeah. when the most amount of deviance could have happened. Yeah, I mean, by far my biggest regret is not using the tracker during my second run when it turned out that they weren't in Verona and I could have gone mm -hmm. up to Verona that night. I mean, that was pretty brutal to find out because my logic had just been like it wasn't even like a close call if they could make it to Verona. The only reason they didn't is that they were delayed for like two hours at that mm, yeah. train shutdown. And I guess I should have thought like, man, I was at that shutdown. I know it took a long time. Like it, I guess it could have, but I just never, it never even occurred to me. Like what if it goes on for three hours? Like I'd never mm -hmm. seen a delay that long before I think ever. So I just, I just was like, there's no way they'd be delayed that much. So I was just like, well, they'll definitely be there, you know? Yeah. So, yeah, you, well, you can't uh, overstate how limited of a perspective you have as a runner relative to yeah. a viewer. Well, it's I, I imagine it's very difficult to be managing like your own run and then also having to plot out exactly where you think the chasers will be and their run essentially and film and do challenges and, film and, and challenges and, and all the scroll it's Twitter. Just, yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> Um, well, Sam eventually gets caught, which leads to Ben's train mishap, um, which genuinely, I, I, I say this to big brother players sometimes who have like a kind of a rough time where it's like, I know it sucks, but you really contributed to like an amazing moment of television. <laughs> and I feel like that's, Definitely that's how I feel about Ben's train mishap because getting to watch that happen. Cause like, I feel like it's such a relatable moment not necessarily the exact scenario uh sasha mentioned she's been through a similar thing but like that thing of like something happening in front of you that you're just like no mm -hmm. that can't be real mm -hmm. and then it is real and you just have to like cope with it there is something nice about the fact that we are both contestants and producers because mm -hmm. i think that is more easily solace. Like if I was just a contestant on a show and someone was like, that was, you really fucked that up, but it was great TV. I'd be like, <laughs> I don't care. Like who cares? I well, especially like when there's money on the line, it's like, yeah, mm. I was trying to win a million dollars. Yeah. Um, and so I do think it's easier to tell ourselves that, uh, given that it is our show. 
Um, but there's also like, I do think that there is, you get biased towards the type of panic of like, this was so bad that it is bad for the show. That like mm -hmm. something mm. so bad has happened that it will make the show worse. Um, it just like it ruined your run so there or didn't ruin ruin it, but like you were worried it was ruined so much that like it ruins the balance of the show that you now this is like theoretically your only run. Right. And then it's yeah. like I, I was worried like, oh, this is going to be really boring mm -hmm. if it turns out there was like I, and I didn't realize this at the time. There was like a train that ended up setting me on a pretty meh normal tag run yeah. um but but i didn't realize it at the time and i was like well and we've talked about this on the podcast that like i thought I, and i i had like misread the train tables or and i've forgotten that they were in a 45 minute period and not a 30 minute period and so i was like oh there aren't any other trains and so they're just going to tag me here and so i was like i think i just need to concede this run and that's going to be this weird awkward moment that we've got to figure out how to deal with on the show mm -hmm. and so there was that panic but once i got on the train i was like okay you know i can make something out of this yeah. um and I you tried. did you made pickles i made pickles i made that's for a pickle i guess and in fact i've been completely vindicated fortunately mm. Have is you? that your read of the situation? I yeah, I have been completely vindicated, which <laughs> is interesting. interesting. That's I think that's interesting. Yeah. Uh, we talked about this on the recap. That... One definition out of hundreds that aligned with your... <laughs> Miriam Webster has vindicated me, Sam. <laughs> we okay. we talked about this in the podcast that like I I watched this and to some degree whether he was correct or not, I let Ben gaslight me into believing this was normal. I was like, I must not understand what pickles are because Ben is so confident that this is a pickle and that makes no sense to me, but I'm just going to accept it as truth. And that's how language works. It's true. <laughs> to some degree. <laughs> Maybe not so, one guy, you know, but... Uh, I think at the very least, Ben put in the appropriate amount of effort. Yeah. I had an unpleasant... The thing is, that part of the card wasn't even part of the challenge, really. It was just an unpleasant thing to do. <laughs> and I made it unpleasant. I had a bad time. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. It looked like a bad time. Yeah. Um, <laughs> ben, why, just why so funny. have you I mean... done, like... Ben, you, you've done, like, 100% of our unpleasant food challenges ever. Yep. That is, is simply a, a lie that's not true. I did by do do? far the most unpleasant food challenge that has ever been on the show by an enormous margin. That is true. That is true. But there is a weird oh, thematic on. consistency that has emerged. Ages ago. <laughs> it was a long time ago. At least recently, Ben has done all the... And you were about to do our, mm. our, uh, our, our Oreo ravioli. <laughs> Mm -hmm. Which, okay. I saw like one seen... Reddit post of someone trying that. It is even worse than I expected. <laughs> I've seen multiple people do that. I saw one person, they like made fresh ravioli and did it. Oh, yeah. I like, think that's the like, one. Did yeah. like homemade. Yeah. Um, yeah. Which I thought was very impressive. Well, I, but I, I, I do just have to say, like, because I edited the section of Ben pickling and the the delight that I felt when I discovered the footage of him finishing the pickle, taking a giant swig of vinegar, again, for no reason, did not have to do that, like spitting it out. And then in like the hilarious, like half vinegar filled sort of mouth voice being like, all right, let's go, was like <laughs> so amazing. All I can say about that is that whether or not it was part of the challenge, it seemed like it was appropriate in the moment. Sure. Fair. The moment called for it. Well, my what... favorite jet lag challenge of all time probably was Ben making mayo the outside mayo, of yeah. <laughs> That's what the <laughs> second he got this one, I was like, oh, it's the mayo all over again. Yeah. Yeah. This one was close, but 
I just love making Ben get his hands all eggy or something. You know, <laughs> yeah, in, a in town. I'm curious though. Uh, do you think that eating slash drinking the pickle is worse than eating the card? Oh, uh, who who could say? Who I mean, you both say? experienced one end of it. Yeah, I mean, Honestly, the vinegar the card is not that. that. The the vinegar at least is food. Mm. But I would eat a card any day. Sasha wanted me to ask, uh, what was the card made of? Card. Card? Yeah. It's card. <laughs> card. This is not something that you like planned. Like, let's make sure there's nothing no. in there. No, this we, this was a planned thing of we had everybody has like a, a backup deck, like a fresh deck. And mm. so I remember Sam had been like, we should make sure that we have like a clean version of the card and everyone did like everyone had a perfectly mm -hmm. you could have taken a brand new version of the card out of your backup deck to eat should that have come up but i believe sam you were in such a rush that you did not do this yeah because like the train was about to leave and if i hadn't gotten that i would have had to wait like an hour or something and it was quite cold there um and i don't want to think about like all that those cards went through like being in I mean, given where ben's used cards hands, ended up yeah, they went um, but I had to do what I had to do. I'm amazed that Sam did that because Sam Sam is is very squeamish about these things. And uh, as Adam said, was the one push because I was like, well, just eat the card. But Sam was the one who was really pushing. He was like, no, we need clean cards to eat at least. And this then was like a 30 card. second conversation. Well, no, because you be vetoed funny. this card in the past. He's vetoed it we've past. we've we've. I was amazed that we got it in the deck this time because we just I broke wanted down that eventually. card for so we had pitched long. This, we had tried to get this in, like, I think it was maybe our fourth Sam attempt do it. To card into a deck. I think I was mostly worried about just, like, I don't want to I don't want to get sick from card juice on, like, day one. I'm right. fine with it on day three. Um, yeah, that's you true. Know, once the content is made. Um, and that probably influenced my decision making uh, here. I do it just was all fine in the it. end. I do just love that it was the final challenge too. I just like, cause I just remember like when we came up with it, I don't remember who came up with it even, um, but just like the vision, which I was perfectly realized of just like that there is no description, like every other challenge <laughs> has the challenge and then the description of the challenge. And this one, it's just three words and they just, there is no further detail necessary like eat this card simple that's it yeah um so uh so adam you start your second run yeah. in a uh on a train moving train look i just would like to say that like i had like two different completely fucked things happen to me with my run mm-hmm like I started it on a moving train and then I tried to go where I wanted to go. And then there was the train shut down. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But that, that helped you. We were stuck for like three hours. You were stuck for like five minutes. Well, I was stuck. I couldn't have gone the way I wanted for those three hours. I had to go somewhere that was the opposite direction. Yeah. Anyway. If you I had known that, that they were stuck, neutral. If you, if you had known that they had gotten stuck for that long, do you think you could have found a route out, or do you? Do you oh know? yeah, I bad. could have gone up through yeah. Verona. I could have gone yeah. up to Innsbruck. Yeah, yeah. No, I could have really done something with that. Well, that again, that's my huge regret. Is like if I had bought the tracker and known where they were, I could have gone up to Innsbruck and and potentially gotten. Or if he had gone on the Trenitalia website. Yeah, there, there was a niche <laughs> corner of the Trenitalia website where you could have found this out. Yeah, tough. That would have been that would have been real. But bad. but I will say like you know that's I'm certainly not defending myself in that like had I I should have bought the tracker, I should have maybe done more research. I should have been like, what was that slowdown? I bet they experienced it. I should do more research. Like I I should have done both those things, and I it would have helped me, and I didn't. So but you you I, just I you always assume the worst. Better. You always are assuming the I worst. I do. No, I do. I really. I mean, do. we all I do. Really That's do. like how you play the game. 
Yeah, it's interesting because that you'd think that that is the best way to play is to just assume no, that they're not. playing as optimally as possible. But then, yeah, you're missing out when they don't. Exactly. They um, rarely are in all cases. Th- yeah. <laughs> and and when they are playing optimally, they're usually playing more optimally than you expect them to. Like mm-hmm. they're ahead yeah. of you when you don't think they could have been. Yeah. Um, there was actually like so few moments this season where I think the chasers were doing what this the the the, runner. Uh, the high the, the runner uh yeah. thought uh, they were doing like probably well, was... more often than not they were doing something different i could be wrong i feel like i'm remembering that like there was a lot of expectation that they would be following you whereas the chasers were usually trying to figure out a route like around to get in front right yeah were, were th- when were the chasers ever just directly following like almost never this season i think yeah which was quite yeah. unusual Mm. And it's also the easiest thing to be able to predict, right? Like you're already. Well, on I think that was line. the reason why they didn't. Yeah. 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 I think never. I think honestly, the closest kind of was your final run. We were sort of just following behind mm-hmm. you. Yeah, we had no. Yeah. We didn't, we didn't even really at a certain point, you didn't have an option. Were. Yeah. We thought that we were like trying to get ahead of you because you were going to have to go down to Bologna and over to Milan, and we were just going to go mm-hmm. straight to Milan. So like, we sort of functionally followed you, but that wasn't even our intention entirely. Mm-hmm. Uh, well, this this run, of course, led to another one of my favorite moments of the season, which is uh, the double uh, juking, uh, both yeah. unintentional. Well, well, Overblown. okay, okay, well, intentionally I mean, leading to an unintentional <laughs> situation. Uh, if I could, so I okay. feel like I feel like I just was willing to eat crow and be like, I should have bought the tracker. I made a mistake, like. I'm willing to admit that that was a mistake, but mm-hmm. which I think gives me the credibility with the audience to defend myself <laughs> a little bit here, which is that, look, yes, my plan did not work in the way that I had intended for it to work, mm-hmm. but I, I would make two arguments. And Ben and Sam, I'm curious, you, you can disagree with me on this. I'm 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 open to 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 your perspective on this. I believe one one thing that I would say is, I think that had you guys it just stayed in Padua or whatever. My plan very likely would have worked the way I intended. Right. Like probably given that they knew you were coming on that specific train and still didn't see you. Right. I think it's likely it would have, it would have that extra bit would have helped even more. Yeah. So like, I think that it, 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 my, my plan had the capacity to have just worked exactly as intended. And a second, I would say that my plan did, in terms of a a broad sense, you know, I don't know if you ever are familiar with the phrase, you know, the purpose of a system is what it does. My goal was to evade them. And I ultimately did evade them through making strange choices that they didn't anticipate. I had a theory of how my strange choices would lead to it working. But like my choice to be like, I'm going to do a bunch of strange stuff and hopefully Mm -hmm. like this will work, you know. I think there there's footage that isn't totally in there where I'm like, I don't know that this is going to work. I don't know that it's going to work the way that I want. Like, this is my intention. But I also like think that just doing erratic stuff will lead to a higher likelihood that this will work out for me. And yeah. so that would sort of be good plan. that would sort of be my my defense of my plan. I do think. Yeah, I do think it was a good plan. I mean, um, even if it didn't work specifically the way that you anticipated it did work in the way that you intended uh the end result at least um and it was very funny the way that it worked out (laughs) where um the the uh, the like unaware uh train swap i think was just very very funny um i'm like i'm actually curious because i think that if you had known that they were there I wonder if it mm-hmm. would have been more difficult to evade them. Um, you know I, I mean? think that's actually really interesting and potentially an indictment of me in that, I guess, yeah, <laughs> it's interesting. If I had known they were there. In Monsalice? Yeah. Well, I think Cause, that... Because a lot of... A lot of what helped you evade us was the fact that we thought you had spotted yeah. us well, yeah. you did yeah. not you were know hiding. that we were even there. Right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, I feel like my best move would have been to, 
I think I still would have done what I did. I think I would have switched trains and been like, my best chance is that I switch trains and they don't realize it because I think that their bias would have had to have been on assuming I was just on my train that I was on. And then my best well, shot would have been to get off and switch. I think that's what especially I was It's very original, hard to put myself in the hypothetical though. But especially the original train that you were on was a faster train. So, mm -hmm. which was why we were biased towards that's the train we're going to go on. Yeah. Um, because we knew that then that would get us a second shot. So, well, ultimately, yeah, you take the other train knowing that they're going to beat you there and know that you're on that train. Um, so I don't know. Yeah. I mean, maybe, maybe knowing that you, you take the riskier approach and you try to get on the faster train. I don't know. Yeah. It's hard I to mean, say. It, in practice, this is like, way too much strategy to have to be able to actually ingest and uh yeah. make a good decision on in the split second of uh yeah. of that kind i of love moment. these interactions I, these are some of my favorite moments in in tag i think they're what makes tag so good is like these near misses and like uh even when you do catch the person i love the the like final moments of a run they're always my favorite it's fun. I mean, well, it's interesting, like going back to um, the very start of designing this game. I remember there was quite a bit of discussion about like, do we need to make you actually physically touch the person to tag them? And I remember there was a while where we were like, I don't know, like it might freak people out running, chasing after people in these unfamiliar countries like that might seem bad and you know maybe it should just be you just have to get to where they are you know and then that counts or whatever or, you know and i think that there really is some juice to just like no you gotta tag them because it's the, it's the tagging them just is that extra little bit of like you know i think it does something i agree i like it um can you can uh ben and sam can you walk me through because we see it in the episode the second miss uh because you have the very helpful like little name tag pointer that's like behind a thing but like how exactly did this happen did adam come out in a crowd and you didn't notice him or was it just like a blind spot so i i cut this together and i spent a lot of time looking at the footage because i was like i at the time, we were we were earnestly quite confused why we did not see him. Mm -hmm. um, and I was like, surely he must have been in the footage at least. Um, and I we just we just ignored him or didn't see him or something. But the fact of the matter was that like there there was sort of a giant column in the middle of the platform where like the stairs went under it. Mm -hmm. And there was one set of doors on the train. There was a single set of doors that opened right in front of the column right next to the stairs that neither Sam or I could see, at least from looking at our cameras perspectives. Mm -hmm. That was the one door that was the blind spot. And Adam happened to go out of that door. Had he come out of any other door on the train, we would have at least theoretically caught him on camera. But is that something you try to do when you're coming off a train, knowing that if they are going to catch you, they're likely going to be on the ends of the trains? I don't think it's something any of us have ever considered. Maybe in the future. Maybe now that we've seen this happen. <laughs> but, you know, I feel well, like maybe in the this, future you start checking the middle. <laughs> yeah. But I do feel like this interaction, though. I mean, and maybe this is just, you know, confirmation bias or whatever. Like, I feel like there's always moments in these seasons, especially early on. I feel like when we were making a tag and also, very, you know, the show generally, there's a lot of like, whoa, like what a crazy coincidence. Like that this, you know, that you had this near miss, like what are the odds, whatever. And it's like, we've played tag like three times now and there have been near misses every time, mm -hmm. which like kind of makes me be like, I don't know. I think that it's, I mean, yeah, I'm, I'm curious, you know, as an observer, like if you have any thoughts on this, but I like feel like I've slowly become convinced. Like I think the format of the game is just that like there's enough attempts at tags and there's enough like randomness and stuff that like near misses are relatively likely like again like we've done it three times it's happened every time or like come mm -hmm. close you know like i mean the other uh, big like wig thing in massey palace shoe which was like not a near miss but was like could have been you know like there's uh, there's always been like these intense catch moments mm -hmm. that have naturally yeah. occurred 
It's like, I don't think you can bank on them. And I don't think that's a situation you want to be in as a runner. But I also no. think that like, it is worth keeping in mind that like, even if they've got you, like they don't necessarily got you. I, I think, I think it's actually like more likely than it seems because as the chaser, you have too many different like possibilities, like things to look out for, right? Like you need to be yeah. careful of, are they going to stay on the train? Are they coming off the train? Um, yeah. And keeping an eye on all of the different doors and there's a bunch of different people uh, and the tracker doesn't really help you in that spot. So it's a pure, like you've been right. so reliant on the tracker for so long, all of a sudden the tracker is almost useless in this exact right. moment. So, uh, you know, it's, I think not as unlikely as it, it appears on the surface. Um, and then, yeah, you do it enough times. It's not then bound to happen, I think. Um, but they do eventually catch up to you. You were going to use the tracker, but uh, too late. Yeah, um, finally was going to use it. And uh, they they catch up to you. I think you guys mentioned on the layover. I think, Sam, you mentioned that like watching Adam from behind as he's about to get tagged is very fun. Um, and I, I will concur with that, not specifically for Adam, but just all of it's again, it's like yeah. the moment leading up to a tag when like the, the runner is unaware is, is it's, I think a really, really fun moment because we're so used to seeing you guys like from the front filming yourself uh, and like having that perspective. Yeah. And so to yeah. all of a sudden get the perspective of, Oh, that's Adam, like from a different perspective, like right. this is how other people yeah. see him is really fun, especially like knowing that you're about to get tagged and you're completely unaware of the fact that you're being watched. Yeah, it's like a rare moment yeah. for us in person to get kind of what the viewer gets to experience of yeah. of like, you know, knowing the impending doom that's about to happen. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah. And because uh, I, I, I had full faith in Ben making that tag, as I always <laughs> yes. do. Yes. Yeah. No, that's really funny, though, Taryn. That's a great observation that I've never even really totally considered is like, it's that weird angle on them that you haven't seen at all. It's like, it's sort of like that surreal thing of like seeing a, a sitcom set, like with mm -hmm. the fourth wall cut out or something, you're like at a different angle where you realize like, oh, what I've been looking at was only one perspective of this thing. And the actual nature of it is like, you know, different or something. It's sort of yeah. like, it's sort of well, surreal almost in that way of like, oh, now I'm seeing this thing that I, you know, only it used to have one view of. Well, I also quite liked in tag two when we had the great tag in uh, Emden, right? Uh, mm -hmm. Where, uh, yeah, yeah. where like I was across the canal from y'all and got y'all running mm -hmm. by as, as Ben approached. Mm -hmm. that, was, that was another great, uh, great shot, I think. Um, but yeah, I agree. It's always fun. Yeah. I mean, uh, case, so then of course, I think Adam knew it was coming, but you know, yeah. Uh, Sam, you then go on your, uh, your winning run. Yes. Um, and I will say it like, cause you guys pointed out correctly that this wasn't as inevitable as it might've felt. Um, yes. mm -hmm. given yes. that uh, that like these trains like had to line up in a certain way. I think that um, just like the way the season was formatted, like knowing we were coming into the finale, it was like, well, surely Sam must win then. Uh, yeah. But like, but I think you're right that like there were so many ways this, and I did have a moment of like, Oh, they they could actually catch him, and then this could actually be Ben's. Um, but then, it, but then when you make that train, I was like, okay, all right, I see. <laughs> I think it's the sort of thing where, like, when Nate Silver says that Hillary Clinton has a seventy percent chance of winning, everyone takes that to mean that yeah. uh, she has a hundred percent chance. Exactly. Uh, and in this case, it's like it's certainly the yeah. likelier scenario. I think at that point, but it's far from guaranteed. Mm -hmm. Right. I think it's, yeah, it's that interesting. Nate Silver has a, said something along the lines of like, people only understand two, like three different types of odds. Yep. Something is almost certainly going to happen. Something is extremely unlikely or something is 50, 50. Right. Yeah. And, and intuitively we are unable to really like understand anything in any terms other than those. Yeah, that for sure. And, and I think especially in this kind of, 
like television or content space. Uh, like we deal with this with Big Brother all the time. Like right now in Big Brother, it's like there's been a very heavy front runner for a while. And it's like, mm -hmm. well, that person is almost yeah. certainly going to win. Um, oh, who's the front runner? Out of curiosity, having watched the first episode. Uh, well, I guess slight spoilers for Big Brother if you somehow are not caught up on Big Brother. But uh, Chelsea has been the front runner for quite Chelsea. a while. Who's that? Who's that? Um, she was the microchip in week one. Uh, she was the uh, she lost that first uh, competition. Oh, sure. what I want to point out about this show uh, is that uh, the finale of this episode started fuck words the finale of this season uh started uh not too dissimilar to how the finale of episode season god damn it one <laughs> started uh i'm pretty sure i might have even had a, a larger coin balance in season one mm. um i don't remember exactly but like i had around i had a similar ish range I spent a lot of it on the power up we had then, which was like the, the freeze, I think is what we called it. Um, yeah. So I think that was like a thousand coins or something. And that was a way mm -hmm. um, right away. Um, but like, I sort of had fundamentally the same strategy of accrue a lot of coins in my first round in my first run and go for it. The second run, the difference ended up just being geography and partially luck. Yeah. But like yeah. the, the, the slightly different geography here meant that like I, you know, season one, I started in Brussels and I had to get, you know, into Germany, basically it kind of stay in Germany or Switzerland to win. But the trickiness was that I had to sort of take a C shaped route to. Right. Well, and the other big thing to, you like, had the that fastest route was like C shaped. Sorry. Had that chain cancellation in Germany. Remember yeah, and it's like I that. that strategy totally would would have won if not for mm -hmm. uh I mean I didn't only have one train cancellation, I had multiple train right, cancellations. Too. And that and was before Adam, we fixed that rule. Um yeah. and so uh, this was something I don't even know if we've mentioned this, but we did change the rules so that if your train is canceled or is delayed more than a certain amount, you get a refund. Mm -hmm. um, I think yeah, I think that's I, I feel like I remember hearing something like yeah. that. Um so, well, and I would also, sorry, we'll go, you finish what you're saying. Sam. Well, just, just the point being like the, the, the margin of victory for Adam in the end mm -hmm. in season one was, was very, very slim. Um, despite, you know, the fact, so like it fundamentally could have ended the exact same way. Uh, for some reason though, just like that season people, I, I think people were just a little bit more focused on my coin balance this season because it came so fast um yeah. despite the fact that it was not very different so like the the same thing could have happened totally could have happened again because i also think that i was potentially deeper into well there was less time this time though like uh -huh. the game was gonna end sooner like you started your second run mm -hmm. in season one i think like and like the very beginning of day three yeah Versus here, it was like a few hours into day three, but in fairness, mm -hmm. not that many hours, you know, not that huge of a difference. Yeah. Yeah. I think you well, also, I would also guess that means, oh, go ahead. Oh, you yeah. <laughs> I think you also just tend to like, if you anticipate that something's going to happen and then it does happen, you're like, see, I knew it hundred percent the whole time. Right. Yeah. Um, yeah. Well, well, cause I would also say that from a, you know, from a, from a, a game play, like the state of the game perspective, Sam, I would say like, that's a good point that like the state of the game actually wasn't that different and you lost. I would say from an editing and storytelling perspective for what it's worth, we end the penultimate episode of this season in almost the exact same way that we end the penultimate episode of season two of tag, right? Which is with a runner in dire dire straits pulling off a big juke that they didn't see coming mm. and then the chasers still being pretty sure that they would get them and that it would be fine and sure. in ben's case you know i mean you could have in ben's case the finale is just the rest of ben's run it's just yeah. him juking us again and then he wins right you know, like I thought I thought with certainty that you would just get caught at the next station. And when you didn't, 
I was like, oh, wait a minute. Now there's all kinds of things that could happen. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, I think that, you know, we, not that it was totally intentional, but I think part of it was like, we try to cut where we cut off the penultimate episode in such a way that like, you can't know who's going to win. Mm -hmm. Like there's a reason that the finale is an hour long. And it's that if we had cut off my run, like any later, if the finale basically started any later than it had, it would have been clear that Sam would win. I think mm -hmm. where we cut off the penultimate episode, it's still possible that I could win. Cause again, that's exactly what Ben did in season two when he won. Yeah. yeah. That's what we want um, you to think. <laughs> it's, it's, yeah. Psyching you out. Um, all right. Any other uh, thoughts from the season? Um, that you want to give before we we wrap up i think this has been very thorough yeah i've, I've really thoughts. enjoyed this this has been a lot of fun um okay we did have one question sasha sent me a question from uh the youtube comments what was the most surprising thing from someone else's run you discovered while editing the season that you didn't know about during filming oh mm. i mean this only sort of counts Just editing I mean, because I, I, don't, I don't, you know, go through the raw footage uh, like Ben and Adam do, but I only found out much later that Adam hadn't seen us in his little no, yeah. thing. <laughs> mm. uh, so, so ben and I you just didn't... assumed, you know, we assumed we had gotten spotted. Um, yeah. Oh, because totally. I guess I had that conversation with Ben, but yeah, you, you were running off. off. Right. So you were yeah, I, I only found that out at the very end mm. of the game. And then uh, it became funny. a trophy, so he wasn't able to say anything to you about it. Right. 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 I think that... Mm, I think the biggest thing I discovered was um, how close Sam came to missing the train that got him the big lead that I think kind of won him the game. Like, I had assumed... I knew I ultimately he told me like he got on a delayed train or whatever. I don't think you had described just how close it was. And I remember getting into that and being like, oh, my gosh, like you barely make it like it seems like you're going to miss it. Like you think you're yeah. going to miss it because you barely get the ticket in time. Yeah, no, I mean, I think I told you, like, I was mostly doing that to like show to the camera that I tried. Like that's that was like right, what was right. going on in my mind. Yeah. Uh, rather than because I thought there was no shot. That's so I funny. To I demonstrate. I like, felt like it felt like you didn't think you were going to make it when I was watching that you, you do it, and no. I and therefore I was very surprised when you actually did. Yeah, and, well, and maybe in retrospect, I, I should have no, you know, I should have internalized from Ben's troubles that the delay indicators aren't always accurate. But like, I was well. No. I, I think it showed. I forget exactly the timeline, but like it showed like you were past it. Forty-five minutes delayed from like nine fifteen, maybe. And it was well past 10 uh, or whatever the numbers actually were. Like I, I was, yeah. I was more than five minutes, I think past the, the indicated delay time. Uh, mm -hmm. So I thought there was no shot, but right. you know, they sold me the ticket and they yeah. got on it. So, well, it's kind of funny too, because like, that's exactly what Ben, your explanation was for why you hid in the photo booth. You were like, yep. you didn't think that was going to work. You were like, it, it's just like, I have to, I think there's an interesting thing that happens when you're filming, which is like you sort of have to make the greatest possible effort at every moment, even if you believe that you are doomed, because I think yeah. that the audience is not, you know, the audience doesn't like it if you it feels like you gave up when there was even a sliver of a chance that you could have not had to have given up. So I think mm -hmm. we all find ourselves sometimes attempting things that we really don't think will work. And we really think that like, honestly, I should just freaking stand here and like, let them tag me. Cause I know they're going to tag me and like, this isn't going to work, but it's like, you well, got to give it a chance because there's a possibility it'll work out. Yeah. And then sometimes it does work out. And, and even this beautiful. exact kind of scenario, lesson. even this exact scenario of trying to get on a delayed high speed train or trying to get on a high speed train at the last minute, like you see plenty of instances. And, and I think there were even some maybe instances that we didn't even show uh potentially of, of 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 trying to do this exact thing and it never really worked mm -hmm. um in fact i don't think 
any single time we ever got on a delayed high speed train using this kind of no. method. No. Um, yeah. But yeah, works out. Yeah, I mean, good listen, for the narrative. I, I appreciated Sam you trying to evade the tag at the top of the little castle thing. That oh was... yeah, <laughs> right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I did have one. Uh, unless you have another thing to add. Uh, oh, sorry. I just was going to 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 throw out there as a as a question that I'm curious from you and potentially if you and Sasha have discussed this because I haven't listened to your thing uh, that you recorded on the season. Do have you, or honestly, I'll put this out to any viewer. Like, does anyone have a good theory of what to do if you are in a town, the chasers are in a town, the same town where you are, small train station, like how to get out of there? Because I really was confronted with this in my in episode one in my first run of like, I had the benefit of knowing that they were there. And I kind of realized like, I don't have any ideas about how to use this information to my advantage. Like I don't, I can't think of any way to still evade them. And then in like Castel Franco, if I had bought the tracker and I had known where they were, I don't know what I would have done. And I'm wondering, has anyone developed like a theory as to what you could do? Cause I asked you guys this too. And you guys were like, I don't know. It's a good question. Yeah. I mean, I would, I would assume your first hope is that there's another way out somewhere that you could at least draw them from or draw them to. Yeah. Uh, Cause like, so they can't just camp the train station. Um, but then if, if it is just the train station, then, then yeah, I mean, I think I, it must just be like um, just rack up points while they camp the train station, maybe uh, yeah, try to just like, out, they have to like draw out them out, out, run back in, you know, like something yeah. like that. Like, you know, but I, yeah, I don't think there's like a solid way unless you could get in a boat like Ben wanted to, you know, you, you are allowed local buses and maybe, yeah, that's like not a bad idea. You could have like done, a, you could have sort of tried what I did in my first run of like take a local bus to a different station and then yeah. you've kind of circumvented them or mm. even just like quickly take it to the main station and hope yeah. that they yeah. don't like notice mm. in time mm -hmm. um honestly we shouldn't be discussing this these are these are now good ideas <laughs> mm -hmm. i th i really i think that like if if anybody ever pulled that off that would be one of my favorite moments uh because uh, like i said i love i love the interactive stuff so uh you know keep keep thinking about it um i did have one final question because sasha and i talked about this uh that it would be fun to make a tier list of the trophies uh Ooh. do you have a favorite oh. jet lag trophy mm. i do really like this season's trophy a lot I would hope I so. I thought it was. I thought it was. <laughs> Each season gets better. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm trying to think. Um, also, I like the cookie in in hide and seek. Like yeah, yeah, that was a good one. Yeah, I think that my favorite trophy sequence, without a doubt, is tag two when Ben has the parade and Joe Biden gives him the key <laughs> to the city and kisses him on the forehead. Mm. Um, yeah, but that's, that's good, less good. the actual trophy itself. Hmm. That's a good one. I think you. I think you could count it as ambiance. If you can count that as a whole sequence, that's my favorite. Yeah. What I, I I think some interesting BTS is that usually how we decide what the trophy is is like we're exhausted. It's the end of our final day, and we're like, okay, what do we do? One person throws out one idea, and we all go we like, go, yep. Okay. <laughs> yep, yep, right. <laughs> I listen, I, I don't think it could be done any other way. No, I don't think it would work. Yeah. I think um, it's like how Saturday Night Live, they're like, no, we have to write our sketches at like 2 a.m. on Tuesday or whatever. <laughs> like, yeah. that's the only way it's going to have the right juice. Makes sense. All right. Well, uh, thank you guys so much for giving me so much of your time. Uh, this was a lot of fun. Uh, I hope that the the listeners and viewers enjoy it um any any final thoughts anything you guys want to plug thanks for watching a little hey, thanks for watching. jet lag the game if you've watched mm. this whole podcast and you've never heard of jet lag the game 
We mm. should consider checking it out. Yeah. You'd be surprised at how often we sometimes get listeners who will listen to a recap of something without having watched it. Um, so hopefully, if you listen to this whole get... thing, you should you you should go and watch it, mm-hmm. particularly like on Nebula. Called Tag. Play yeah. Tag. It's fun. Don't watch this season because now you know everything that happens. But go watch one that you don't know what happens. There's yeah, lots yeah. of good ones. We spoiled actually a lot of different seasons of Tag in this one podcast. Yeah, we kind of spoiled but, the endings uh, of all of them. But you, know, you probably wouldn't remember gone. though if you hadn't seen them. No, yeah. you wouldn't remember. You wouldn't remember. Yeah. Uh, all right. Well, thank you all uh, again for for joining us. Uh, can't wait for the next season of Tag uh, or or of Jet Lag in general. Um, and uh, of course, if anyone is looking for more coverage of shows and or content uh we've got you covered here at rjp uh talking big brother survivor uh the circle just ended we're, we're covering the summit which is starting soon um and uh, we also have stuff going on uh, over at rjp we know scripted tv uh a podcast called the tastemakers we're talking about mm-hmm. horror stuff this month it's good good time over there and uh and i also stream over on twitch watching a bunch of episodes as they air, uh, hanging out. It's a good time. Um, and of well, course, I would also uh, say, I would yeah. also say that if you're watching this because you're fans of us, our HAP did quite a lot of coverage of our show, the getaway. Um, so true. if you're a true person enough. who you're watching this because of us and you watched the getaway, you could go watch a lot of their really fun coverage of the getaway. So the getaway was very fun. Our yes. HAP that you could check out. All right. Well, thank you all so much then for joining us here today. And I will see all of you next time. Bye.